Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us not to do anything so egregious to give you a reason to come down to correct us. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. That's Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as the people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks uh, for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower uh, with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the earth, of the whole earth, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all of the earth, and they left the building of the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. That's the word of God. Today I want to talk about uh, don't make me come down there. Most likely, almost every child has heard in some form or another with dread a parent saying to them, don't make me come down there. Or come, don't make me come in there. In other words, the child was disruptive or, or keeping up such a ruckus that they might tear up something and the parent would warn them. In this case, God had already warned mankind and now he prepares to go down or come down to the earth. It appears that mankind had reached that point with God and God decided to reveal to mankind what was going on. Remember now that God is omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. And he knows what, what is taking place in all of the earth. Not only that, he knows our thoughts are far off. And so now, Let's enter into a study of God's response to mankind's actions. And remember, our overall series that we're working with is God wants to be with us. God wants to be with us. And today we look at it from the standpoint of, don't make me come down there. The historian Charles Byrd wrote, whom the gods would destroy, they first make drunk with power. Whom the gods, that's not the true and living God, but the small gods, the little gods that we choose over the true and living God. He says, to whom the gods would destroy, they first make drunk with power. 
from Babel to uh, Belshazzar in Daniel chapter 5, and then from Herod to Hitler, and from the former President Trump, uh, God had demonstrated repeatedly that he doesn't, it, it doesn't pay to rebel against his will. Pride, according to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 23, verse 12, warned that those who exalt themselves will be abased. God in heaven is never perplexed or paralyzed by what people do on earth. Ooh, and we get all upset a lot of times with what people do. But God is never uh, upset. He's, he's never perplexed. He's never paralyzed by what's going on down here. Babel's arrogance in, in their statement, let us go up was answered by heaven's calm, let us go down. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in contempt. Of course, God doesn't have to investigate to know what's going on in his universe. He laughs and, 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 and the language is used only to dramatize God's intervention, not the lack of his wisdom or knowledge of what's going on. As with Adam and Eve in the garden, God's judgment at Babel not only dealt with the immediate sin, but also helps to prevent future problems. The unity of mankind would only give people a false sense of power that would lead them into even greater rebellion against God. By confusing their language and scattering them over all the earth, God graciously spared their lives and gave them opportunity to return to him. He could have destroyed the builders, their city, and their tower, but he chose to let them live. So often, what we do would be more than enough for God to just destroy us, but he chooses to let us live. The word Babel sounds like the Hebrew word Babel, Baal, which means confusion. Because of God's judgment, the gates of the God became the door to confusion. Instead of making a name for themselves, God gave the project a new name. In his church, God is not the author of confusion, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. But in the world, God sometimes uses confusion to humble people and to keep them from uniting against his will. The word Shem means uh, name. And in Hebrew, Abraham, a descendant of Shem, was promised that God would make his name great in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. The people of the world depend on their own wisdom and efforts, and yet they fail to achieve lasting fame. Who knows the name of anybody who worked on the famous Tower of Babel? Yet, the name of Abraham is known around the world and revered by Jews, Muslims, and Christians. There's a vast difference between mankind, we will make our name great, and God's, I will make your name great. The book of Genesis emphasizes names. 
And in this book, God changed several names. For example, Abram became Abraham. Sarai became Sarah. Esau became Edom. And Jacob became Israel. And so on. What God calls a thing is far more important than what we call it. And we would fare much better peace-wise, confidence in God-wise, and success-wise if we would learn to use the God-given ability to name, and I'm not talking about name it and claim it, but don't let somebody else name you. Don't let somebody else name you no good. Don't let somebody else name uh, you as being disrupted, confused in life. When God was creating the world, God gave names to the things, and he even asked Adam to name the animals. The word Babel means gates of the gods back then because of their intentions, which was to build a tower that reached up to their gods, little gods. Nowadays, most people would think confusion when they hear the, the, the term Tower of Babel, because the true and living God confused their language and shut down their building project. The story of Babel isn't just a part of an ancient history because Babel and Babylon uh, presents a spiritual challenge to every believer today. Babylon eventually became a great city and a great empire in uh, 606 BC to 586 BC. The Babylonian armies attacked and captured the kingdom of Judah. Of, and burned the temple and the city of Jerusalem and took thousands of Jews captive to Babylon for 70 years. God used the cruel and idolatrous Babylonians to chastise his own disobedient people. But in scripture, Babylon symbolizes worldly pride moral corruption, defiance against God. The biblical contrast is between the earthly city of Babylon and uh, that rebelled against God and the heavenly city of Jerusalem that brings God glory. Babylon represents the world system that opposes God hates Jesus Christ and appeals to the worldly appetite of human nature. In one sense, the Antichrist, Christ, against God. Babylon is the opposite of heavenly Jerusalem, which is the city of the saints, according to Hebrews 12 and 18. In the original Babel, the people wanted to build a tower that reached up to the heaven. But in Babylon, the Babylon of Revelation, uh, chapter 17 and 18, we can find uh, Babylon's sins reaches up to heaven in uh, chapter 18, verse 5 of Revelation. Earthly Babylon, Babylon is called a prostitute, while the whole city from heaven, while, while the holy city, rather, from heaven is called the bride of Christ. That's the church. Every generation builds its own towers. Whether these are actual skyscrapers, like the Sears Tower in uh, Chicago, or the Tribune Tower in Chicago, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, the Trump Tower in New York City, or even mega corporations that circle the globe, or mega churches which multiply camp with multiple campuses. The idea is the same, and I'm not knocking uh, mega churches, but the idea of this is the same. We will make a name for ourselves 
in most instances. God's people can't escape being in the world because it's in the world that we have our ministry. But we must avoid being of the world. We are not here to build the arrogant tower of men. We are here to help build the church of Jesus Christ. What humanity can't achieve by means of its, pride, its uh, proud towers, Jesus Christ has achieved by dying on a humiliating cross. All who trust Jesus Christ are one in him and will share heavens together, regardless of races, nation, or languages, or tribes. While the world system is outwardly producing uniformity, inwardly it's tearing things apart. What social scientists are now calling technopolis is controlling people's lives. But the Holy Spirit is using the church as an agent of reconciliation to bring things together in Jesus Christ. In one sense, Pentecost was the reversal of Babel. For the people uh, present present in Jerusalem at Pentecost heard the praise of God in their own languages, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Now the day will come when people from every tribe and nation will worship Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, that he's King of kings. And the judgment of Babel will be done away with, according to Zephaniah chapter 3 and 9. Each person must make a choice, each of us, today and daily, must make a choice. Will we identify with Babylon or will we identify with Jerusalem? Will we identify with the worldly prostitute or with the heavenly Pride, bride. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus came down through 42 generations, got off in a little town called met Bethlehem. He went to a cross one Friday and he died to save sinners, to reconnect us with God, to reveal the complete person of God to us. He, he, he revealed God's unending love, his enduring mercy, his all-sufficient grace, his forgiveness, and most of all, God's presence with us. One of his names was Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Jesus came down so that we could go up. He died on Calvary one Friday, and they buried him in a borrowed tomb, but early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand power to make us and our name great. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for making us uh, who we are and what we are. Thank you for making a way for us out of no way. Thank you for uh, leaving where you were and coming down in the person of your son, our savior, to put together, put us together with you again. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen. 
Thank you so much for joining us again once once again on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I pray that God will bless you through the Rama word or, or through the word that he has presented to you today. Nothing new, but nonetheless it is his word spoken to these lips of clay. I pray that he will bless you and I believe that he will. And until next time, so long.